Namaste and welcome back to the JavaScript series. Today, my friends, we are going to be discussing a concept called as functions in JavaScript. And let me tell you, all the topics which you are going to be learning in the future, how well you're going to understand this literally depends upon how well you understand functions in JavaScript. It's such a fundamental concept, such an important concept, right? Any which ways, I will be dividing the discussion of functions into two parts. One would be basics, others would be advanced. So basic and advanced, right? Under basic, I would be teaching you these topics. What is meant by this, we will see when I explore that. Under advanced, I will be talking about these topics. Only once you master all of these words that is appearing on the screen in front of you, you can confidently go to an interview and say that I understand JavaScript. Forget about interview, even if you want to be able to write code and understand code written by others, these concepts are very, very important, right? Any which way, let's start from the very, very basics. First of all, what is a function and what does it look like, right? Okay, let's answer that first. Try to understand. First, let's see what a function looks like. See, function will usually have four things. First thing a function will have is a name. Function will have a name, right? Next, next to the name, there will be simple brackets or parentheses, within which sometimes it's not mandatory, it's not compulsory, but it is possible that a function can take some input from the outside world. It can accept some input. Whatever input the function accepts, please try to understand, will be collected within those parentheses. That's why I'm writing input there. After accepting the input, under this, we will be having these flower brackets. Inside the flower brackets, every function will perform some activity or task. It will perform some kind of an activity or task. After performing this activity or task, a function would then sometimes, again not mandatory, but sometimes it will give some output back to the outside world. It will give some output back. Technically, in programming, we say return. It will return some output. So name, input, activity or task, output. This is generally the structure of a function. But what I have said now is a very non-technical way of saying things. If I have to technically convert the same, in JavaScript, a function will always begin with a keyword called as function. There will be a keyword called as function. Next to that, you will have name. Next, you will have parenthesis. But that input which it receives, we don't call it as input in programming. Technically, we call it as parameters. I'm sure you would have heard this word somewhere. After accepting input or parameters, it is now going to perform some activity or task, which in technical words is called as the body of a function, function body. Am I clear? After which, it will give some output. How it will give some output is, it will be returning a value. It will return a value. So please try to understand, usually if you say something is a function, you'll see a keyword called call as function followed by name, parameters, body, and return value, the value which is getting returned. Am I clear? This is how a function looks like. So now your eyes are able to spot what is a function, but you still don't know what it does, why we require, everything we will understand. But please try to understand, let it be any programming language in the world, a function can primarily be of four types. Four types. What do you mean by four types? Let us assume these are all functions. These are all the body inside of the function, you know, the activity or task it is performing. Now let's see what are the four types. The first type of function is, it will not accept any input. It will not accept any input or parameters. But after execution of its body, it will not give any output also which means no input, no output. No parameters, no return value. It will just execute its body, that's it. No input, no output. The second type of function is, it will not take any input, but after execution of its body, it will return some output. The third type of function is such a function, which will take input, but after execution of its body, will not be giving any output. I think everybody can predict the last and final one. Is such a function, which will be taking input, and after execution of its body, most certainly will be returning output as well. And these are the four types of function. Obviously, clarity will only come once I write some code. Anyways, 
I hope this much is clear to all of you. Now, before I go ahead and write my very first function to you, from today onwards, we are going to be learning JavaScript in a slightly unique manner, which many, many people and instructors and developers who are either teaching JavaScript or learning JavaScript completely ignore, which is trying to understand JavaScript from the memory point of view. Friends, if you understand JavaScript from the memory point of view, obviously your clarity is going to significantly increase. So if I have to give you an example, imagine there are two people. Both of them know to drive the car, okay? But one person knows only to drive the car, whereas the other person not only knows to drive the car, but also understands how the car works, knows about the engine, understands how internally the mechanism of the car is working. Now, let us assume, while driving, suddenly there is a breakdown of the car which happens on the highway. The first person who knows only to drive the car would now get out of the car and go and open the bonnet of the car and try to fix it. But no matter how much they try, they cannot fix it because they don't understand how it internally works. And how much ever time you spend, you will not be able to fix it. But the second individual, who now, whose car also broke down, when they go and try to fix the car, they will be able to easily fix it because not only do they know how to use or drive the car, they also know how it internally works and hence they can fix it, right? Similarly, you are a developer. Either you just use JavaScript or you use JavaScript and understand how it works. Now, the advantage of knowing how it internally works is you can fix problems. Problems in programming are called as bugs or issues or errors. The task of solving these bugs or fixing the issues is called as debugging. And 99% of programming is actually sitting and fixing your errors, you know, debugging your code. I hope you will understand. Any which ways, I hope you understood the significance of learning. Long back I've told you, this is our microprocessor which executes our code. Ultimately, this processor has two memories as attached to it. One is called as the primary memory, which is also known as the RAM. Other is the secondary memory, also known as the hard disk, and I've already spoken about this. We also have understood that within the hard disk is where we will be saving our JavaScript code. But this code cannot execute unless until it is loaded onto the RAM. Only then it has a direct access to the processor, correct? Now, anything which is executing in your computer, including your JavaScript program, is present on the RAM. Anything under execution is present on the RAM. Great. But one thing you must understand is, let me just zoom into this RAM. See, if you think that only your JavaScript program is making use of your entire RAM, you're wrong. Please understand, Google Chrome is executing. It is also on the RAM. Let us assume, uh, you know, my command prompt is executing. That is also on the RAM. VS Code, where I'm typing, code is executing. That is also on the RAM, right? Let us assume my note-taking app, Notion, is executing. That is also on the RAM. Like that, one region of the RAM is allocated for your JavaScript program. It doesn't occupy the entire RAM. Now, this region is allocated for whom is the question. It is allocated for the person who can execute a Java program. And who can execute a Java program? Please try to understand. You know, JavaScript is a programming language which can execute within the browser. For example, Chrome. If you try to execute the code within the browser, then the V8 engine inside the uh, Chrome browser will execute the JavaScript code. But I don't want to execute it inside the browser. I want to execute it outside the browser. And outside the browser, who's responsible for code execution? That is only Node.js. Correct? So please understand, this region on the RAM which is allocated is nothing but for Node.js to execute your code. That is why it is called as the Node.js runtime environment. I hope you will understand. It is within this where the JavaScript code is ultimately executing. Now, if you understand what happens inside the Node.js environment, trust me, you will become a rock star developer, right? Anyways, let me just zoom only into this Node.js runtime environment. Now, there are many things inside this Node.js environment which we will be exploring in depth. But please understand, every Node.js environment has certain memory segments within it. One memory segment is called as the stack segment. Another memory segment is called as the heap segment. 
And of course, what makes JavaScript very, very unique and how we achieve things like asynchronous programming, which we will be learning in the future, is using a concept called as the event loop, right? We will discuss about each of this in depth, but to begin your uh, programming journey, you must at least understand these two segments, stack and heap. Starting from today, every JavaScript concept will be taught from the memory point of view, and I hope you guys enjoy. Now, let's get back to understanding functions.